So you start out with your bowl. It's three cups of flour. And I just make a huge well in the middle because you want to fit eggs into it and salt and oil. So I start with a huge hole. So it's three cups of flour and three eggs. It's really easy to remember. If you do four cups of flour, do four eggs if you want to make more. So instead of cracking your egg on the bowl, the way that I do it, I crack it on the table because the flat surface just cracks the egg. When you crack it on the side of the bowl, what happens is all your shell goes inside. But everyone learns how to crack it on the bowl. So I crack it on the table and then just kind of pop it open into my pasta. What size eggs? These, I think, are just large, large eggs. Most recipes assume large if they don't say. Yeah. Extra large works fine, but large yeah. is good. You'll see how to, if the eggs are big and it's too moist, you can add more flour. If they're too small and it's dry, I'll show you, you might need water in it. So you add your eggs in. There's a tablespoon of salt, which might seem like a lot, but flour and eggs have no flavor. So you really want to, this is your first step to adding flavor to your recipe. And then oil, a tablespoon of oil. So what you want to do is just pop your yolks first. And at your table, with this step, you can take turns. So you can, someone can start whisking for a couple seconds and then hand it over to someone else so your wrist doesn't get tired. And you don't want to force the flour. Do you see how I'm rotating the bowl and the flour is just kind of pulling in by itself? If you force it in, you're going to have huge clumps of flour that aren't mixed in. It's going to be like a ball with dry flour inside. So you just want to let it go in by itself, work itself in. And so you keep on going, rotating your bowl. And the reason I don't do it on a table is whenever I do it, when I crack my eggs in, everything just slides that over, slides out, it just becomes a whole mess. And if you guys live in Manhattan, you don't have a lot of counter space, right? Mm -hmm. No. So this is the easier way to do it. And at this point, are the proteins already activating? The, the gluten and the flour? It's starting, but after this, I'm going to show you the next step is kneading, which is really going to work the gluten in it. Yeah. So, and if you're adventurous to try the table line at home, like one cup of flour and one egg is a good way to start. Three yeah. and three is like room for canals. To get yeah. That's what I'm going to do it here. <laughs> so once it's like this, you kind of have like a solid dough. It's still super sticky, but you're going to get rid of your fork. And the best way to do that is I coat my fork in flour just to get all that dough off. And the flour just helps it not stick to your hands. So you coat your fork in flour, get your dough off, and then you're going to use your hands. So you don't want to put your hand right in this gooey dough, otherwise it'll all get stuck to your hands. So you want to dig under the flour and push it over. And this is starting your kneading of the dough. So you're just going to keep rotating your bowl again. and. Avoid touching your hand to the actual dough. Just dig it into the flour first to keep it from sticking. So it looks like it might need a little water because you still want all this flour, or at least most of it. You don't need to get every single piece into the dough. So I'm going to put my water right here, but then you don't want to put your hand into that water right away just because it will stick to your hand. So. And the first thing you think is to dig your hand in the gooey right, you part. Right, so you're so excited. It looks dirty. like so much fun, <laughs> but you want to avoid it. <laughs> How much? That's what I it's do. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like hands are covered in dough. Yeah, that's the first thing I do. It's still going to get a little doughy, but it just prevents, like, that whole big ball of dough from hitting on your hand. How much you water do you start off with? Off. That was just a tablespoon of water. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter the temperature. No, it doesn't. You don't want it to be super hot because you have the eggs in here, so I'd say just room temperature water. So I just keep on going. It looks like this little leftover flour is not going to get absorbed, and that's okay. You'll use it when you need your dough. So now you can take it out of your bowl, and this is where everyone in your team can work together. So this big piece, to try to knead this, will take one person, like, 10 minutes, but you can have the help of your teammates. I've split it up. If you have five people, make five pieces out of your dough. 
and you're going to knee on the table. So you want to use the palm of your hand and just push down on your dough and fold it over and then give it a half turn and keep on doing that. If you see the dough's really choppy, it looks really dry, but the more you do this, it's going to get smoother. You want a really smooth dough for your pasta. And this is working out. Flour has gluten in it, which is what makes pizzas chewy, bread chewy, pasta have that bite. The more you knead it, the more you're working the gluten's out. So you'll see it, it's going to start getting rubbery, elastic-y. So I'd say maybe five minutes, everyone can knead their dough and we'll come around we'll after. see it when it's done, it kind of gets that pretty cool. Yeah, and I'll come around and I'll show you this piece when it's done. So when you're done kneading it, the dough's going to need to rest. So we'll give you guys containers, we'll put it in the refrigerator.